one thing to think about in relation to that question is what do we mean by teaching for understanding? For me, that means making sure that the the learning experience is connected to learners' interests as well as to the curriculum or the subject matter that they're studying. One way that new technologies and e-learning help connect curriculum to learners' interests is by bridging time and space so that learners can connect with what they're studying over time and across distance. I think that affords lots of opportunities for helping them connect what they're studying to their own lives. So that's one key part. The second feature of Teaching for Understanding is that the goals focus on understanding, not simply on remembering facts or formulas or procedures. And again, I think that new technologies make it possible for learners to uh, connect what they're learning to applications, to, to make sense of the ideas, not just to memorize uh, particular facts and figures. Uh, a third feature of Teaching for Understanding is that the learning activities enable students not just to uh, remember and recite what they've been told, but to actually try to put ideas to work in relation to their, their own uh, priorities or projects that they, they do. And again, with new technologies, we have opportunities to help students learn in a variety of different media with um, sounds and images and video as, as well as uh, talking and writing, and uh, to practice putting ideas um, into action over time. A fourth characteristic of teaching for understanding is that learners get feedback on their understanding and opportunities to revise and improve their work. In traditional settings, it's often difficult for them to produce work, share it with others, get uh, coaching or feedback from their teacher or their colleagues, and then make revisions in their work. But when they produce work with new technologies, that kind of sharing and modification of draft work is much, much simpler. And when um, coaches or tutors or teachers give students feedback on their work, they can do it in a context where all the other learners hear uh, that feedback. So students are in a position to learn from one another and, and the assessment they get. Which brings me to a fifth feature of teaching for understanding, and that is that Effective teaching for understanding involves learners in a community where they are uh, responsible for helping others learn and where they learn from one another, not just from the teacher. So once again, I think particularly network technologies offer lots of opportunities to make student thinking visible to fellow learners as well as to the teacher, uh, to help students um, communicate with one another, learn from one another, and uh, participate in, in peer feedback as well as uh, interacting with their teachers. So I think no technology automatically guarantees that we will teach for understanding, but when I look at the features of effective teaching for understanding, I see many advantages and opportunities with ICTs and network learning. <laughs>